All right, ladies and gentlemen, so today is the big day. Today we're gonna to go ahead and try to install those gears, those pinion gears that are needed to launch this uh, 26 meter bridge. Okay, as you can see right now, we have completed a good portion of the laying arm, the Velegger arm of this Panzer II AVLB. Just a couple things I do want to point out. First of all, uh, we did put together our rollers that are here uh, on both sides. I think we did okay with that. We installed the auxiliary arm, which I'll go ahead and deploy right now. It is all manual, okay, and seems to be holding up pretty well. I need to tighten it up a little bit or make it a little bit stronger bond there. But that seems to go. <clears throat> Did added a couple baskets over here in the front. I'm going to install or make two others that are going to be behind the heck arm that are going to be, be um, at the rear of the tank. Uh, we'll worry about those two guys later. But today, we're going to go ahead and get started on that pinion gear. As I mentioned to you before, we're going to be using these two different types of pinion gears that I purchased online. One of them is a hardened plastic that will be found on RC uh, model kits, those little slot cars. This one as well is a brass one. It's also found on slot cars as well. Uh, both of them are oversized. Uh, they're a bit bigger than what you would see on F-16. Let me go ahead and bring those guys out. Right over here. Okay, this guy right here. Although the di uh, dimensions of that gear, that pinion gear seems good, it's the width of this piece that's gonna be problematic possibly. The hole seems okay, that bore hole seems okay, at least for the black plastic one. The brass one is a bit bigger. We might have to solder a rod on there or make the rod hole a little bit bigger. We'll see when we get there. But the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and build one of the two bridges. We're not gonna do the whole thing, but at least we're gonna get an idea how the dimensions are gonna be for that, uh, laying arm that I just showed you. So that's our next step. So on the bridge, uh, it's quite a few steps, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be basically step 16, this whole entire sheet, 17, 18, and part of 19, just to build one half of that bridge um so that's quite a bit of work and then to do the other half then it comes 20 and 21. so on 21 we connect them and that's what i kind of want to do connect them to see what our dimensions are going to be um and see if this is going to actually work if not then it's going to be uh, a long, laborious, static build. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully I'm gonna do this right. Hopefully this thing does come out. Let me go ahead and show you this massive bridge. And again, this thing is like tremendously long. I I'm just very concerned how my model is gonna be able to hold all this plastic up on one arm there, let alone on the heck arm. Uh, this is both sides of the bridge. Here's one piece. Here's a second piece, uh, second half. And here's the uh, supporting structures that were found underneath that ramp, uh, one and two. And there's some other parts. So what are we dealing with? We're dealing with here sprue P and N. Sprue P and N, I believe. Let me just double check. Okay, so it's not sprue P, but sprue M. Sprue M. And again, uh, yeesh. 
It should be pretty challenging. Hopefully you could be able to see the entire thing. If it gets, if some of the video gets cut short, it's just that I don't want to show off my entire mess of this uh, table here. Okay, so let's go and get started on the sides. So I remove uh, part N10, N11, and there's also another part uh, N12. Trim that guy down. Okay, so just FYI, there are many ejector pin marks check the pinholes. I'm not sure if they're gonna interfere with the looks of things, but you know what? If someone's gonna come by and look, oh, you didn't cover up all those ejector pinholes. You know what? Uh, I'd like to see what you're gonna do for, for that build uh, and not take a year to do it. Uh, so be very careful with all those spare, shucks, uh, sprue uh, buttons that we have here. There's a lot of them, uh, so hopefully you're not. Hopefully I'm not cutting into them. So I'm going to go ahead and start sanding parts down. Okay, so FYI, looks like N12 barely fits. I don't think it it's right up against that edge here. Sorry about that. That edge here is N12. Uh, there looks like there's a bit of a space in here right along. That's <clears throat> Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Right along here. Uh, I don't think that gets covered up. So just be aware of that. Don't try to press down on it and try to mate them together. It doesn't look that way. Uh, we'll see. But the three pins do fit right there. Okay, so go ahead. Post those guys down. This very flimsy, just FYI. Wow. Okay. That gap kind of gets covered, but I don't think it's an actual joint there, just to be sure. And, and again, since these pieces are so long, if you're using a glue, uh, I've seen bases that have like a square base, uh, or just recover your glue, because otherwise you're going to have a bad spillage. And that's something uh, you don't want to have half. So the M tree has many of these brackets. They are in order. So make sure you keep them in order. I I'm pretty sure they're order of elevation uh, for the ramp itself. So just be keenly aware of that. Let's go ahead and start off with 17, 18, and 8. Okay, so here's all those braces. Uh, some of them are not kind of complete. They don't have that complete uh, bridge looking thing that you would see on these guys. Uh, but you know what? I'm gonna probably have to like uh, write down the numbers so I don't get confused on who's who in the zoo. Uh, and I think I'll probably just use a, a regular pencil for that just to make sure that there's no confusion uh, whatsoever on these guys. So this is them. I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning them up. 
I uh, already did this guy, M23, over here on this far end. Hopefully you're able to see that. And then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and meet um, these two guys together and continue on with that bridge. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So as I was building these brackets, uh, I noticed something as I was cleaning up the, at least the first four. Um, take a look. I'll show it to you in a still. But on here are two different sides to this piece. And what I mean by sides is if you take a look at the edges, take a look at the edges, uh, the edges on there are different. For whatever rhyme or reason they are, I, I just want to point that out to you because even though they look uh Pretty much the same. I mean, it does look bigger here, thinner there, uh, but there is a rhyme or reason for these things to be put on there. So, as you're attaching this onto N10, it looks like that smaller cut down there at the base compared to the longer cut over here. That part goes onto N10. And if you look at it, uh, I'll try to show it to you, maybe once it's all glued down. There is a bit of a, a step uh, along the inside here that runs the length of this piece here. And if you look at N11 on this side, it's a little bit, you can see it big time, this big long piece that's right along here. So just to inform you on that, just be aware, be careful, don't start gluing stuff down. I don't know how many times I have to tell you to test fit, test fit, test fit, but dry fit your parts. Make sure that you are properly putting those parts in there correctly. Um, besides the height, besides labeling them, um, just check it out, okay? All right, so second update, I wanna point out about these brackets, uh, at least these half guys. Uh, it looks like there's some texture on there, some simulated non-skid or possibly uh, something that looks like aluminum. This entire bridge is made out of aluminum for obviously reasons. You don't want this thing to be made out of steel and just crush this tank. Uh, even though this bridge is supposed to hold about a 70 ton tank in real life. But it feels like there's a bit of texture uh, on these guys. As I was cleaning them up and, and admiring the differences of the sides there, it just feels a little bit uh, rough, like sandpaper. Very, very, very fine sandpaper. So be careful when you're doing that. There was this one part that I, I ran into um, as I was cleaning it up. I think it was part number uh, M6. It seemed like there was a little bit of a scene there, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to kind of leave it there because I'm not too sure if there's a part that's going to be attached onto there. So we're going to leave that alone. I cleaned up one side, but I didn't clean up the other. So we're going to go ahead and glue these guys down and... Um, and made it to this other part, this N11. Okay, so as you can see on the first one that I've already put down, M17, um, there is a bit of that edge, as I mentioned to you, right along here, that little piece right here. So there is a difference between one of the bottom brackets and the other brace that's over here. I'm gonna call them braces. I don't know what to call them. But uh, just be aware of that as you're gluing them down. Don't get those guys mixed up because you're going to run into possibly some severe problems. Okay, so moving on. Okay, so the last thing I want to point out, as again, I already mentioned to you about those braces. If you do put them down the wrong way, as I did with this one, it's not glued down yet, uh, but I, it, it's almost like a snap piece. It's kind of neat. Uh, but you can see right off the bat, um, <laughs> it doesn't look right, okay? And if you don't catch it uh, right off the bat, you'll notice that, okay, that doesn't go there. Oh, okay, it goes, right, goes in that way, okay? And that way, everything's all nice and flush uh, for that ramp, okay? Moving on. 
All right, so last update, uh, as I was put in the last three before putting on this plate uh, at the very front. Uh, Hobby Boss, here's another suggestion. Besides that one that I mentioned way back when with that heck, heck arm about that position of that one brace, uh, I would actually probably put a pin over here, a mounting pin, because otherwise, as you're pushing down on it, it does give a little bit, especially this guy right here. Wow. Okay. Not cool. Not cool. Okay. Too much of a wobble there. Okay. So you might want to put a pin, a mounting pin right here and another one over here just to give it some uh, structural rigidity because uh, that, that last one was, yeah. Okay. That's a really flimsy. Hopefully that thing's going to attach over there on the other side as I bring all this thing down. So that's the next step. I'm going to go ahead and glue this one on live for you. Again, keep that, keep that glue, uh, seal, keep that glue sealed. Uh, you don't want to have this, these large parts knocking over your stuff here. And it's, you'd rather have that happen than knocking over your stuff. Okay, so now it goes right there, it looks like, okay. All right, so next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab this guy, or maybe just leave it there and just flip this one over and then just attach it straight on. That's probably what I'll do. Probably start up with the front. Start with the front first, because uh, those things are a bit flimsy. This is more flimsy. These two guys right here are very flimsy here. So let me go ahead and attach it. And kids, make sure you vent. There's a lot of glue that's going down on here. So make sure you get some ventilation in you. Okay, let's flip that over. Let's just go down the line here, one by one. You can hear them clicking into place. So it's almost like a snap kit there. There it goes. You could, if you want to, since we just glued that part down. See, very flimsy here. Very flimsy right here. Ugh, that's really ugly there. Okay. Um, I don't have any C clamps that are big enough, but that might be another suggestion for you to do if you're doing this to clamp it down, make sure everything's nice and secure. Yikes, look at that. Yeah. And that one's good. That's a little flimsy. Hey, okay. that one's good. That one's good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead just attach a little bit of glue over there on that. Actually, on this side. Flip it over. I mean, it seems pretty solid. Wow, that's, that's a nice solid piece. Okay, now, that's secured, that's secured. Okay, so there's part of one of the bridges. And this is just one ramp. I, I still gotta build huh, the other side. So you can see how large this son of a bitch is gonna be. It's gonna be a really major task 
uh, to put this thing together. And for what I want to do is actually, like I said, I've been saying this throughout the whole series, is actually have this bridge extend out. And with the weight, and we're not even halfway there yet. We're, we, we've still got a few more steps to go. A few, uh, several more pieces left. Uh, smaller pieces, bigger pieces, the ramp itself. Okay, so what's the weight load going to be on that laying arm, on that heck arm? I'm more worried about the heck arm. Um, although the, the auxiliary arms probably will help uh, in bringing this thing up and keeping it steady as a display. Uh, but, but even the weight, what weight am I going to use? Okay, so that's really nice. That's firm right onto the ground. Okay. Yeah, Hobby Boss, I would strongly recommend, if you're watching this, put another pin here, another pin right there. Just make sure that this thing's not wobbling. You have a pin here for this guy. It's down at the bottom. You have a pin right here for this guy. That's good. But the pin here was either mislocated or um, someone just missed it. Okay, so... There you go. All right, so one more part for that bridge. Uh, I want to point out, again, uh, these braces, uh, they're not interchangeable, so watch out what you're doing. But also, I was getting ready to attach uh, this end piece, whoop, that end plate. Um, hmm, which way, which way does it go? Okay, so again, Tanko grad, thank you, thank you. Uh, depicts it pretty well in page eight, page nine, uh, the Tango Grad Le Guan, as I always mention to you about this fabulous book. It's in German, but it's also in English text as well. So nice pictures, I keep banging that thing. Nice pictures, good reference, and it shows, jeepers, it shows right up here, top of page eight, hopefully you can see that. Top page eight, top page nine, um, how that bracket looks. Okay, so this guy is actually going to be not like this, but this way facing out. Okay, so this guy's going to go right on here uh, against there. Now, I haven't glued it on there. It is a bit flimsy because, you know, it's the end plate. But I'm going to go ahead and place that on there. Come here, you. This is not going to cooperate. Okay, just like such and then glue again the inside portions uh, to get that thing secured okay so there you go all right so I'm gonna go ahead and lay down uh, it was gonna be P uh, P2 this is the lower bottom portion of that bridge uh, just a couple things I want to point out number one I did not cut these middle sprues out yet because I, I just didn't want to break it yet but be very careful at the ends uh, especially this guy right here uh, it could be easily broken um, I sanded down all the spurs that are on there and there's a spur on either side uh, a little plug hole um, sprue plug that's there so be careful when removing those two guys and sanding them down okay other thing I want to point out, as I was test fitting it, okay, this guy goes like such. There's a couple of location holes, I guess, uh, at the bottom here. So I, I just place it up on there and let everything right up on there. But as far as gluing, uh, whoops, get back on there. As far as gluing, uh, a couple things I want to mention. Uh, once you start gluing the other half, let me get to that one. Once you start gluing that other half of that uh, bridge, check your fittings. Uh, make sure they're snapped tight on there. Uh, there was one that was not too well done, so I had to kind of open it up and, and re-cement it uh, because that might have been a reason why this thing was so loose, uh, that back plate that's there. Uh, so check all your braces, uh, especially when you're gluing them down. Make sure they're all fitted on there. You have time enough to actually maneuver it as the glue is setting, uh, but I didn't. 
I didn't check it. So, but it looks even. Um, as far as the ramp, there's no undulations or anything like that. But getting back to laying of this bottom portion, there's a few gaps. One of them is right along here on the inside. Uh, as a hopefully you can see that part uh, over there in the back here, in between. There's a bit of a gap that's there, so that should be submitted. And then on the other side, where they meet over here, that bottom uh, part of that one plate, what was that, N12, uh, it, it glues up on there. So be careful when you're gluing that. And then on the flip side, uh, it's just mounted straight onto that gap that's right here. Again, hopefully you're able to see that. Okay, so watch where you're cementing things. I'm going to cement, jeepers, I wish that they went all the way through. It looks like this part right here, I'm going to lay uh, a bit of the cement right on top of that ledge. Uh, I think it's going to be on the edge. If I'm not mistaken. You get this in. Yep, that was right. I was wrong. It is this side. Sorry about that. Uh, along the edge here. So it looks like maybe about halfway. I'll mark it. I'll mark it with a pencil. Mark it about halfway up so that we'll get glue on this side. On this side. Okay. Not all the way down. Just along that edge here. Just along this edge right here. And then on the latter half, put it on top. Just like you did on this guy. Put it on top. And that should be that should be it. Okay, so I'm going to test fit it again to make sure I know where to attach my glue. All right, so we're going to go ahead and glue this thing down, uh, this first plate. I'm going to start here in the front end, uh, gluing the inside portion. Uh, I'm using a binder clip. It seems to hold on pretty well onto that. And then we're going to just go piece by piece. Um, I'm not sure that's going to work. All right, so we glued down that lower portion. It was a bit of a trick. Um, you know, coming by and deciding where the glue should go down first. I came by, swiped it twice, uh, back and forth, twice or so four times maybe, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, there on the edge, as I mentioned, on the top, and then back on the edge again. And this part's not gonna be, it's gonna be hidden, so I'm not too worried about the seam there. This seam here, um, well, you could probably use putty. Uh, I'll look into it. I'll see if I can use putty in there and straighten that out, make it a little bit neater. Uh, the other side, though, came out quite nice. Um, it was placed on top of the ridge and cemented down, and that came out very nice. So all in all, not too bad. Uh, just watch out for the ends over here, those two ends, and be very careful with this guy, this little stinger right here. Um, I'm afraid that one is going to eventually snap off or break off, whatever the case may be. But as far as the instructions, uh, I'm going to hold off on these two guys, M4, M5 times 2, okay? And these latches, this is where this bridge catches on the other side of the bridge. Okay, this is where it locks into place. So those guys I'm not gonna put on there just yet because again, we're gonna try to figure out the dimensions of this whole kitten caboodle and see how that goes, goes down. And of course the ramp, P1. So if anything, uh, you might wanna mark to make sure you don't get them mixed up. I don't think you will. I, don't, I, I think at this point now, they are pretty much the same ramps. So if you have those four ramps, Putting the last one on first, I don't think it really matters. I'm going to go ahead and snip off these cross beams, which is a good thing. Uh, hang on to those cross beams because they give you a little bit more structural rigidity as you're um, putting this guy down. Uh, it doesn't allow it to move that much. So now that I'm finished, I'm going to go ahead and remove those. There's a little bit of flexing as your first trimming them. 
but I think once the glue is set, uh, you should be a-okay. So there's part of one bridge. The only thing we need to do now is attach the other side, uh, put braces in between, well, make another bridge, attach it on the other side, and then put on that, I think that's what that edge is for, put on that, um, that rack for the pinion gear to rotate around. So that's going to be very important. That's going to be needing some major adjustment, making sure I get that thing on straight. Uh, make sure that the gears uh, lock onto that. Okay, so the other bridge, I'm not going to show you. It's going to be pretty much the same thing. But that's the order I would do it. Uh, be careful with those braces that are on there. Mark them. I think they're going to be, you're not even going to see them once you start priming and painting. Uh, but I would make sure that I would uh, label that bridge so that way you know which one is which. Okay. All right, so with the completion of step 16, step 17, I'm going to show that. Um, yeah, okay, it's the rack, okay, for the rack and pinion. So here we go. Uh, if you notice that it's quite long, so be very careful when stepping that thing off. Yeah, this is plastic. It's like dealing with um, plastic cable lines that they give us for our tanks. Easily snapped antennas, easily snapped. Okay, so I would come by and pressure cut. Uh, don't cut all the way through, just kind of cut most of it uh, of the sprue off. And then once you get all of those majority uh, done, cut at the ends and work your way across. Uh, so that way you don't break this thing, because that would be kind of tragic if this rack gets damaged. Uh, these other parts, I don't think I need them right now. Uh, there's a wheel here. There's these other spring-looking things here. Uh, Nice-looking buffer plate. But uh, if you do notice, you got these four squares, these four rectangles. So once you're finished with your bridge, flip it over to its side. This is the one you want. Okay, this is the side you want. Now, it says for you to flip it all the way over. The holes are right here. Pick this up. There's one two, three, way over here, and four, way, way over here. So I'm not gonna flip it over. I'm gonna keep it just like this, and then just attach one bit at a time, going straight across. So here's the rack, I'm here rack. Here's the rack, as you can see, I left part of the spruce on. Now, when you're cleaning this up, Watch out because these are the holes that you need to. Is that one of the holes? I don't think that is. I'll have to look. But these are the pins here, here, over here, and here that you need to attach it. Okay, now there is one like a little fin that's over here, and that is for this part of the bridge over here at the end. That's where you have that little bit of a divot there, a little bit of a finlet to attach that on there. Okay, I don't know why, but that's the way it is. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and I'll be right back. So now I'm attaching the rack. Uh, I'm gonna go this time step by step because you do have a little bit of play here in between the pins. Uh, they're a little snug, but just be very careful using two fingers really uh, snap the pin in by supporting it on the back side so that way you don't break off those pins. Uh, they're a great guide. Uh, seems to go down very well. It's very well engineered. Another plus Hobby Boss. Uh, but I would seriously like push it down because it's got to be right on that back edge. That back plate, the, black, the face of this bridge. Um, and I'll, I'll mention why in a moment. Let me go ahead and finish gluing this down. I'm just knocked over the glue. And, and again, go every two braces. And then just push that down, push that down. Make sure it's all even down. And then just continue on to the other braces once you're satisfied. And again, I'm having a fan on because of all the glue that I'm using. Uh, so it might be a good idea to use your fans. Nothing wrong with that. 
You're a better man of you. Don't lose your mind after doing models as much as I have. Next set. Just be careful with that end. And why am I pushing down? The reason being is because this pretty large groove, that's right where the pencil is, a very large groove where the rack is, uh, is where the rollers are going to be uh, rolling through. Uh, I'll demonstrate that to you in a moment as soon as I get the rest of this thing glued down. Okay, and there, and then that, that little bracket, uh, I'm just very concerned about those last two parts. Oh boy. So use your fingers, use your file of your nail clippers. And that's what I did uh, I, as I was moving those little sprues on this rack. I was actually using uh, nail clippers real close. Don't use your big giant nippers to cut such a frail part. You'll, you'll be very saddened. It, oop, almost cut over. And a little bit of glue up there on the top there. I kind of figured I'm thinking now oh, should I I bought a metal rack uh, that would have been cool metal rack with those metal pinion gear wow that would have been I think it would have been indestructible it's very flimsy here okay but that's it all right so there is your rack attachment okay so that's one of the things that I needed to get down, uh, maybe it was a little too much. Maybe I really don't need to get the other part of this uh, bridge glued down. But you know what? It is what it is. I'm already, I'm already there. Now, as far as um, this, this is 16 and 17. That's going to be one side of the bridge. Okay, so step 18 looks like to be a repeat of step 16, as well as step 19. It's going to be a repeat of step 17 here, as it looks like to me. Okay, so uh, I, I probably don't need to go further beyond. I don't think I need to. Actually, I probably do need to, because I, I need to attach down there in step 21 I need to attach those two ramps so there you go and then I was looking at this M29 there's like all these little pins let's are you serious and sure enough on sprue 29 there are these multiple pins ay 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 I'm really worried about that you know this cosmetic does it look good I don't know but we'll get there when we get there anyways Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year 2024. So, we're going to go ahead and continue with our building of the bridge because we need to find out the dimensions of the bridge to see how wide or narrow that space in between the bridges are. I've already finished off one ramp already, and during the New Year's break, I was able to do the second ramp. So, the second ramp is already done uh, at this time. 
I do want to also point out that the ramps are a little bit different in a sense that besides me marking them as one and one A, uh, because I want to get these two guys, whoops, wrong side, I want to get these two guys together and, and glue that connections for those ramps. But as you can see, just how large those ramps are going to be. They're quite extensive. And again, I'm just hoping that this thing doesn't weigh down too much. I haven't even put down the ramp yet. So, and, and the other accessory parts. But it is what it is. But getting back to the ramp, the new one that I just built, this guy right here, uh, just make sure that you have these rectangular pieces facing each other. As you can see on the first one that we built and the new one that I just finished building. The other thing I want to also show is, jeepers, just how large this bloody thing's going to be. I mean, it's way beyond the scope of this. Let me see if I can pan out here. It's way beyond the scope of the lens in my semi messy table. So you have a pretty good idea just how large this kit is going to be at the end um, with everything built out. But getting back to the connections, we're going to go ahead and connect these guys on step 21. Now on step 21, I do want to point out that it has all the M trees. So you should have one M tree that's pretty much done except for all these feet that are here for the ends of the ramps and the brackets themselves to connect the two ramps. So we're gonna go ahead and do that part right now. The other thing as well, if you notice, you do have on the second ramp, if you're doing this build, that it has the Q parts. So don't get those mixed up with I believe it's the end parts. Let me just double check. When we first started building this, yep, these are end parts. So don't get N and Q mixed up. Because if you do, uh, you're not going to have a good mate. They're, they're not going to be connected well. And if you notice on the first ramp that I built, you have a little bit of this stinger here. This guy right here. Get this card. So you have that little bit of that stinger right where my thumb is. On the second ramp, there isn't one. Okay, not much of one. So just FYI on, on that when you are building those. The other thing I want to point out is that I did install right inside here a little bit of a tube. Uh, for this one brace because uh, you remember the last time we were putting these guys together on ramp one uh, Those guys that guy was very flimsy. So I, I I reinforced it. It's really good. It's about a two millimeter uh, Space just a little bit over two millimeter to be honest with you millimeter space for you to put that in there You might want to do the same thing over here on the other ends uh, They do have brackets down below, but you have this bit of a flimsy area right up there so just FYI I'm about that I would actually put that one for sure on that one there and I put a tube it could have been something smaller maybe I don't know less weight whatever but that actually helped me out quite a bit as I was snapping them in and the same thing applies uh, what I did this time was as I glued the other side together I pressed down on those brackets to make sure that that thing did not come apart oops looks like it already has okay so I'm gonna have to re-glue that one I have a bit of a gap I'm sure if you can see that there okay so I'll, I'll come back and uh, re-glue that step 21 there so there are several pieces that I need to cut off and then these crazy pins I, I, I'm not too sure if you could just glue those on or or what the deal is So I'm going to take a look at that as I'm getting ready to cut. But there looks like there's four of those 
brackets that are there. Uh, so make sure that you go in a proper order. And, oh, I almost forgot about this guy down here. Oh, um, this guy right here that looks like a spacer in between for the nose there. It looks like these guys are all the same. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out one M26, excuse me, M20, M15, M20, M15, and then two M26s. So these are, where are those guys? M26, these guys right here. And we're going to go ahead and put those guys together. All right, so as I was test fitting, uh, these parts are the same. No big deal. But one of the pins seems a little tough, and it almost like snaps them together. But here's the thing. They ask you to get these four pins, uh, M29. And it's just so crazy. I was like, well, what do you need those pins for? Well, you need those pins because this guy gets sandwiched in between those two parts. And I guess it allows the bridge to be adjusted in a certain way. So I'm going to cut off some of those pins and show you how to put those, put this guy, which you need to make three sets, put these guys in a proper order. All right, so as you're cutting off these very, very fine pins. Here's the thing. Uh, don't cut at the very tip. You do that, very likely you're gonna break this little fragile part. Instead, cut it off there at the, at the sprue tree. Okay, cut it right there. Don't cut it way up here. You do that, you're probably gonna break your part. So just FYI about that. And of course, my favorite thing, get your nail clippers and trim the rest of that part off. Now, there's this little tiny little. I almost have to. I'm afraid I might have to put on my magnifiers here. Okay, so there's one of those pins. Now, as far as shaving it down, uh, getting rid of any spurs on there, um, you could do that. But we're going to test it out to see if I don't need to do that. All right, so I already cut out all those pins. Uh, the four pins are here. Uh, basically, I used my uh, uh, pair of tweezers, which I'm really reluctant to use. Using a pair of tweezers, slip them through the holes, uh, kind of pinch it, set it down on a flat surface, and go ahead and install those uh, in connectors. It looks like there's two sides. There's a blunt in, and then there's a sharpened in. Uh, I really don't think it matters which way it goes, but make sure they're both going in the same direction. So I'm going to put these guys in there, just like such, and then follow suit on the other side. So the pointing end is going down. Oops. Let's see if that works. Go ahead and fit that thing right on top. When I was able to snap mine together. Uh, you might have to glue those pins down just a bit. I would probably put it down on the pointy ends. It doesn't say for you to nip them or trim them. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come by, I don't lose those pins, and just add a little bit of the glue right there at the tips. You really don't need a lot. Pins are pretty small. Now, do you have extra pins? Uh, that I don't know. Let me see. Okay, so as I was looking at the sprue, it looks like you do have uh, several of them. So if you do break one or lose one, which you're probably going to lose one, um, I counted 13, 14, 15, 16, you have 17 of these pins, and you only need 12 of them. So you got five extra spares. Hopefully, um, like I said, you have another set on the other uh, M tree. Okay, so we're just about through with making all these braces. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and finish off on this one. Hmm. Oh no. Yikes. All right, there's a major error that I just made. Let me tell you about it in just a moment. So what was the major error? Well, if you notice well, a couple things, first of all, the instructions, um, there was a set of M19s that were going to go on the outside portion of these braces. So here's a brace right here without that modification. As you can see, it's just one single bracket there that's attached. On the other hand, with the M19s in place, now those pins are not as prominent. And as you can see, hopefully you'll be able to see it. Um, there's like three, three heads on there. Okay, compared to this one being just a single head. Okay, so the outside portions are the M19, uh, which is missing on here. And that's why those pins were so elongated, so huge. I was going, my gosh, I hope those German soldiers don't get themselves caught on those freaking pins there because they were protruding so far out. It looked like it was protruding about at least a good foot out. Now it's, you know, at least on the model, it's not that prominent. But the thing that I had to do was I had to pull all those pins. Yikes. Which really, really sucked. Uh, so what I did, <clears throat> I already done them all already. I just got it where the pointy part was, where that part was extending out furthest, and then just do one side at a time, pushing at the same time that edge right there and the main body, and just push out slowly two at a time because the glue is already set. Uh, it almost firmed up. And then once you get those dies down, uh, they protrude a little bit, just enough for you to grip it with the tweezers and just slowly yank it out. Now, unfortunately, as I was pushing down on a couple of them, uh, a couple of them did snap, did bend. I was able to pull the pin out, but I cannot reinsert it back in there. So point is, literally point is, um, one, be very careful with step 21. There's a lot of small little pieces that are on there. So do this middle part first, okay? Get those guys set. I would still do the same thing. I would start off with putting the pins in through those M19 pieces, get that body on, that one of the two, M15 or M20, slip that through, slip in M26, attach either M20, M15, and then attach that last M19 bit. I'll, I'll try to show you one in this last one that I'm building. Okay, so I'll show you that procedure. So sorry about that, major, major error. Well, not a major, major error. It's a major error uh, that fortunately I was able to rectify. All right, so crisis just about adverted. Uh, the pins are a little hard to push in. Uh, but the other thing I want to point out is that these other uh, secondary brackets, the one that I'm pointing to right here, uh, they do have a, an ejector pin. So I try to flip it, manipulate it, so that way that ejector pin doesn't show. But as far as the pin, uh, get yourself a little bit wider uh, set of pliers, grab the head, grab the other side at the bottom down there, and just very gently... Push that guy through. Not like that, but like this. There it goes. Okay, and that should be set. Uh, I'm using these binder clips to keep it clipped down. Uh, but again, just be aware of the placement, the direction of all these little uh, braces. Then once that's set, now, so as you can see, uh, the pin is not as noticeable. Okay, uh, per scale is maybe about, maybe a couple of inches out. 
and then just add a little bit of glue at the very tips. And that should seep right on through for the rest of the piece. And then, oops, get that binder. And what I just do, I just crimp it and secure it on both sides. Make sure it's on the body as well as on the piece itself. Now, the last thing, which I have not done, is add glue along the seam there and seal that part up. Just right along there on the flip side. Okay, and then once that's done, I get another one of my clamps and just clamp it together and that should seal it. All right, so crisis averted. Uh, I'll show you how to put that new brackets on in the proper uh, way in just a few moments. So on the last one, uh, the last set uh, that we're going to do, again, another M15, M20 uh, scenario. So again, the M tree, this is the last of the brackets here. Okay, so once I got everything cleaned up here, uh, just one other thing, there is an ejector pin mark on that main brace. Uh, so I get your medium grit, slightly groove it in there. There is a bit of a groove right there where that M26 piece is gonna be attached. So uh, just scratch, uh, scratch it a few times and should be good to go. So. What is the order that we're going to be putting these things on? So I, as I mentioned, we got to put these outer brackets in first. So making sure you understand how this guy is going to be fitted on there. So M26, can we go like this? Oops, come here, you. Okay, just like such. And then on the other side, um, that M19, one of those M19s. There are four of them. So you decide on which one you want to do. So this guy is going to go right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attach. Oh, you know what? I'll lay that. Just remember the pins. All right, so as I mentioned, making sure that you have the proper orientation. I, I, I like to come by and just put that middle bracket. That's the part that's going to attach to those two ramps. Once you got that orientated, get one of those four M19 parts, uh, make sure the orientation's correct, and then attach the pins. Slide them in there very carefully with your tweezers. Just bring them in there. Flip the thing around. Actually, let's go ahead and put the other set. Hang for a second. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get that one piece orientated. Then we're going to add those pins to those outer brackets. Get the next one. Yeah, you know, I've always wondered. Those of us who lose little pieces, little parts, photo edge, whatnot, uh, between you and the table. I'm thinking about making like an apron with some Velcro. So that way when you lose something, it falls onto the apron and you don't freak out or panic or cuss and swear out loud in front of your cat um, as you're looking for the piece down on the floor. That prevents uh, us from losing parts. But anyways, uh, so once those are done, I just flip that part over and then I insert the rest of the pieces. So the middle bracket goes right in there. And on the other side, okay. Then your final main piece goes right on top. You almost push that down. You can hear it cracking into piece. It's almost like a snap together. It's kind of weird. 
And then again, watch that orientation. I have it orientated so I do not get that uh, pin injector mark. And just add that last piece on there. Oop, get on there. And then the last one. Okay. And the last thing we do, add a little bit of our glue. Right there at the tips. Push everything down. And that's it. Now, if you want to, you can come by and clamp it. This one's already done. So I'm gonna clamp it here. And make sure it's up against the body as well. Get my other one, do the same thing. Make sure it's against the body there. And the last thing I'll do, just go and get that edge, that seam. Okay, and then my last clamp. And that's it. Okay, once this is dry, It should go into this place. Now, it looks like those braces with the points are pointed upward, up towards the rim. Okay, so like so. And how does needle points are orientated? I don't think it really matters. Um, I'm gonna have mine pointed in a certain way. Uh, but then as soon as it's done, we're gonna go and attach the other one that I have finished. Okay, and attach those guys together. Plus, don't forget that one other piece, that one end piece, N1 and M28s, those guys go like right out here in the middle somewhere, out towards the end, excuse me, okay? All right, so we are now pretty much finished. We're just gonna go ahead and attach these four braces over here and this one little thingamajiggy and it's over here, like a tibia bone. But look at all these nibs that I have. I just have like a whole bunch of nibs from just cutting today, um, removing all these pieces. And, and what is this guy? Well, this thing uh, is gonna be my indicators um, that I'm gonna put up on the front of the Stuttgart. I, I finally came around, was looking for these, and I said to myself, I wonder what those things are. And they're indicators uh, to show the width, how how wide the tank is, so we have enough clearance. So I'm gonna be using those guys. It's for an incorrect vehicle uh, from a World War II vehicle. Uh, I'm not sure about those. I, I'm not much into World War II uh, German vehicles, that is. American vehicles, I kinda know. But as far as German tanks of World War II, I kinda know the major tanks, but anyways. I'm gonna be using these little guys um, hopefully you can see them for our indicators for our width indicators. So that's what those guys are. So let me go ahead and just clean this up because there's a lot that we got to do and attaching. Oh my gosh. All over the place. Okay. Attaching these pieces. So here's the finished one that I've done. This is from the other day. As you can see, it's still marked in pencil. Some of them are on the other side there. I, I figured out you really don't need them marked. As soon as you finish cleaning them up, uh, just go ahead and set them, glue them on there. And this is the other half, okay? But the other thing I wanna point out, make sure as you're doing all those steps, write down what part uh, sprue tree you're using. This is the N and P tree, as you can see right there. Hopefully you were able to see it. That's the first one I did. And today's, uh, ramp Q and R, as you can see with my new, uh, my new tube, my new uh, holder there, uh, 1A. So we're going to go ahead and attach these guys upward, up like this, and attach this little 
tibia bone right around here. Now, again, why are we doing this? So that way I could get the proper width of either using this guy here, a plastic pist uh, pinion gears, or this guy, the brass pinion gears. And that's the only reason why I'm building out this bridge is just to see if those pinion gears are gonna work. And I think they will. I tested out both of them on a brass rod and just scooting them by and they meshed really well with the rack, the teeth that are on here. And that's important that you make sure that you get down right because strangely, as I was working on the newer ramp, I was having some fit problems, major fit problems, uh, getting those, getting that rack down. So just be aware of that. You might have to drill out a hole or two to get all those pins in there, but it worked out, no sweat. So we're gonna go ahead and attach those right now.